today on Houston Life. Ready, set, let's go shopping. Dash Market is going to open to the public tomorrow. What you can expect when you go, and we're going to show you some goodies that you can find at this highly curated event. And Tangi Patton of Good Taste TV, she's back with tips to create your own holiday chocolate boards at home. Yum o. -oh. Plus, Joe Sam is starting his countdown to the big day with a magical event themed after the 12 days of Christmas. We're celebrating the start of Hanukkah tonight is the first night and we're showing off a local house that is sure to get you lit for the Jewish Festival of Lights. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. <laughs> is that for real? Oh. Live from Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Well, welcome to Houston Life. It is Thursday. I like to call it Friday Eve, Baby Water. Friday. Yes. Randy McAvoy is joining us today. I mean, I'm honored to be sitting in this chair next to you. It's Randy, been so I'm long so since we worked together. You know what? We used to sit at the desk next to each other for years. Yep. And I don't know. I think it's probably been 10 years, at least, 12, if not longer something than like that. that. Yeah. So I'm glad y'all asked me to be here. Yeah, it's so great. So Derek's off. Don't get nervous. Just taking a couple days off. You know, well deserved. They're moving and getting yep. their stuff done. So, um, you know, you were the only one who responded to the email. So thank you. Oh, I'm honey. glad I'm to be here. <laughs> hey, anytime you guys need me in, I'll pop in. I'm happy to do it. And I mean, I saw the lineup of the show. Super fun. I right? mean, we got chocolate over there to my left. I know. I mean, Tangie knows what she's doing. We're having a good time with that. Absolutely. And uh, hot chocolate, all that kind of stuff. No wine. For me, apparently, no. I'm not eligible to do that. I, I'll just drink in front of you. Okay, so you can. I'm sorry. I watch you every day. So. <laughs> well, it's so cool to have you here, and I yeah. know for everybody, you know, our viewers that watch all the time, they know and love you. And I think what's so great is that you grew up here, and to be able just to just down the road, yeah, yeah. Bel Air, right? Right. Well, Meyerland, and went to Bel Air, but my, literally the house I grew up in five minutes from the building here. That yeah, is right so crazy. Right down Beach Nut. Yep. Now, when we go into the TV biz, I know, you know, I'm from Chicago originally. I haven't lived there in 100 years. Yeah. But when you start Talk about your bears, by the way. Yeah, well. Kind of a struggle. There. I want to talk about that because yeah. we got a big game on Sunday. My dad's very, very angry. But, um, <laughs> so, you know, when we start out in this business, back in the yeah. day, you had to leave your hometown if, right. you, if you grew up in a big city mm -hmm. and, and then work your way back, right? right. Things are a lot, little right. different now. And so I always wanted to go home. Well... Here I am. This is home now. But I never made it back to Chicago. Yep. And this was kind of like a dream come true for you, right? It, it really worked out. I mean, I, I got out of college in 89 and uh, was able to, to get my first job in Beaumont, Port Arthur for about seven years and then got a chance opportunity in Dallas. So I was there for about seven years or so. And I've been here 16. So I've, I've yet to leave the state of Texas. That's, I mean, that was, if you're going to draw it up, that's how you draw it up. Absolutely. And, uh, man, I've had a blast. Thir what is it, 31 years now doing this. Uh, I've seen a lot, covered a lot. It's a lot of fun. Well, I always love when you're on a good story or watching all the sporting events. You know, you're our yeah. go-to guy. My husband's a big fan. Good. Appreciate um, that. Let's talk about personal life. Didn't you guys have a big anniversary, you and Tammy? We did. Uh, last February, for the pandemic. Right. We, we, uh, we had a trip. You know, going, we were going to plan. <laughs> some, of course, I hadn't planned it yet. There's a picture of us out, and I think we are in San Francisco a couple years ago. Um, but uh, in February was uh, 30 years for us. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, and uh, it just when the pandemic hit, we had to go to Plan B and, and kind of push it off a little longer. Right. But uh, yeah, we met in college and been a happy life. That is so fantastic. Yep. And of course, you're a girl dad. You've got two girls, yes. Courtney and Keely. Yes, and both. Well, one's married and up in Dallas, Courtney. And uh, here, they were here. This Now, this is several years back. I was going to say. Keely's on the left, <laughs> Courtney's on the right, and this is Courtney. Uh, she's up in the Dallas area now and uh, loves her job. And Keely's a senior at Baylor. Oh, wow. And she'll be getting her teaching degree. And she just got engaged. This is her fiance. Congratulations. Uh, she'll be getting married in the summer. So, uh, yeah. You know, girl, being a girl dad's pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Now I'm a boy mom, yeah. and Connor just turned 13, and so were you ever? Were, you, were they ever embarrassed of you? You know, like your girls, were they ever like, Dad, please? It, it, it's, it's what I say is, you, you know, there's the cool factor. You're cool for so many years, right. and then they kind of want to be left alone. Yeah, they hit that. Girls or boys, they're going to hit that stage where mom's not going to be as cool, dad's not going to be as cool, and yeah, you kind of have to just go go with the flow because they're they're always going to come back. I know, I know. I still like think I'm standing on like the cool mom thing. Thing, but yeah. last night, so tomorrow, my husband has to pick up uh, Connor from school and, and, okay. and the group from school. Yeah. So it was a lot of, Dad, 
don't play your your stupid <laughs> rock music when you pick us. Like there was There's lots like a of laundry, parameters a list, yeah. going on. And so Orlando yeah. pulled out some music that he was going to play and try, try to embarrass him and dad jokes and this and that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we were, you know, this is starting to happen now, which I think is really, what about yeah, when your it, girls started dating? Oh yeah, that was a, that was a challenge. I, I couldn't ask a lot of questions, but of course, being the dad, I wanted to ask a lot of questions. Yes. To these guys. And uh, so, you know, I kind of snuck them in a little bit. But yeah, I got that look when I knew I was asking the wrong question, right? Or not being as cool as I need to be. <laughs> and then I got, you know, talked to afterwards to make sure I don't do that again. Oh so that's my part gosh, of it. I know, you know I we know. We have a good time with it. That is so awesome. And okay, so yeah. I, I can talk to you about hours about your personal life too. And I love, you know, you, you played baseball at Bel Air High School. I did. Yeah, um, many many years ago, <laughs> uh, 84, 85 was Bel is Bel Air. Matter of fact, this the, the running <laughs> promo spots they right. They, they call the school I mean look at that batting Randy, stance right there I mean look at that stare I, I mean I was all business there you were yeah, I mean I, you can't go there swinging what did miss. you play I played uh, second base third base and uh, early in high school catcher a little bit as well we rotated around okay but this this was a uh, varsity time I was playing second base and um, had a great team a lot of those guys uh, went on with scholarships division one and I played with a future major leaguer Chuck Knobloch he and I right. kind of grew up together and uh, it was fun, but it was a, a long time ago. And uh, Beller's always had a good baseball tradition, so I was right. always a good chance. To I on. love a good yearbook photo. I mean, I hate oh, yeah. mine, but I love was looking that, at other. I told you it was black and white. Yeah, Remember you did. I, I know we were talking about it. And I thought you were joking, but it is just you know yearbook photos typically yeah, are exactly, black and white. Exactly. Um, what about highlights from your career? What do you think was like one of the big things? Wow. For you? you know what? You know, I've covered a lot in different cities, but the the I think the big event for me because I grew up here and I was a baseball fan. Yeah. Astros. I mean, World Series. Uh, you know, it's hard to top that. And, right. Uh, this was uh, in 2015, I believe, uh, when Carlos Correa. See how young he looks. Yes, he, I know. That was his rookie year, and I think we're interviewing him there in Kansas City during that play when their first year to get to the playoffs after being horrible for like forever. Five years. Yeah. And uh, Carlos was a big part of that uh, turnaround in, in 2015. But the World Series year was awesome, uh, and I covered every step, uh, right. each round of the playoffs, and. Growing up, many, many d games at the Astrodome, uh, Minute Maid Park as well, and uh, just to kind of soak that in, that was really cool. It's yeah. kind of a surreal moment, you know? It is, because you've been waiting and you've been so close. Yeah. And 05, they got there and they got swept. I know. So, you know I know. Uh, I was here for that, too. Oh, that was painful. Uh, it's painful, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, and I know that you, besides all the sport, you know, you love baseball, football, you love it all. Yeah. But you're a big golfer, right? I, I love to play golf. You know, I've, part of this past year, I had a back injury where I couldn't play, but I'm back to playing now and uh, today would have been a great I, I was hoping to play today and didn't work out uh, you said your husband's playing today right he is playing today that's right I mean, and it's 78 degrees in I December. mean it's beautiful but listen Randy I mean hey you ask and you shall receive I know do you want to play do a little something uh, We've we, got a little, are we going to practice? Let's go. We got a little putt putt competition. Oh, right now. Right now. No warm ups. No. What okay. do we, who, warm right. ups are for non players. Okay. Where's the? Uh, you got the putter? Oh, my putter's uh, yeah. right here. Well, right you here. don't. I'll go first. Ladies first. You know, right. We're going to stick to regular green rules here. Uh, each of us have a minute to see how many balls Oops. we can get in this hole in one. I'm not sure. Am I even? I don't play golf. Do I stand this way if I'm right handed or this yeah. way? Okay. <laughs> Seriously, that's a true question. I think my I'm going to win. My poor dad is. You know. <laughs> so I was a tennis player. Right. And my dad thought. Oh my gosh, she can play golf, right? Okay. Oh my gosh, I would get Didn't out of the well. I'm like, oh you know, no, to <laughs> swing, hitting like a big, big forehand. Do we have any golfing music? Yeah, I don't it's know. It's such a quiet game, you know. It, 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 oh, you're Everybody right. says to be quiet. You you're know? right, but not for us. I'm going to go know. first. Okay, I guess we're going to put the clock on, clock on here. Oh, I don't know. Or Orlando told running. me it's shoulders, nothing else, just shoulders. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're going to hit it. Oh, I went in the sand. Is Does that one? This is how many you can get in one minute, right? Yeah. Does the sand? Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute, it shoots back at you. Yeah, it's automatic, but it's going to okay. eight seconds away. All right, hang on. Now I see why you're so quiet. Oh! Now I'm going back Okay, here we go. It's, it's going to shoot right okay, back at it you. Is, but I'm not, I don't have time for that, Randy. i got to get one of these. There it is. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, shot. we got one. There we got go. one. All right. All right, you got about uh -oh. 30 seconds left. Oh, I went back. Yeah, putting, putting, hit it and don't even turn your head and look at it. All right, all right. That's what, some, somebody gave me a tip one time about that. Oh, no. All right, hang on. I'm going to hit this one. I'll get another one ready for right. you. There you go. Oh. oh, I think they're counting the sand trap in the water. <laughs> At least it's going somewhere. Get in there. No, oh. I've got too much on it, I think. This is terrible. We should have some golfing music, I, I think. I know. Just some, uh, you, oh, you almost made oh. it there. 
All right. All right, hang on. Okay, hang on, my... hang on. Before you go, I got something for you, though. Hang on. Don't uh -oh. go anywhere. Uh-oh. Hang on. You can always... maybe do a blindfold or something? We always like to set you up with stuff. You know, we don't like you to feel not special. So here, we, you take oh, this Oh, I get one. the little kid putter. <laughs> That's AJ's. You can use his. Let's see if it's... If I really feel like I'm in putt-putt now. All right, so... All right, Let's so see. here we go. Whip some golf Is balls the or clock flannel, up please. Yet? Okay, you we got one minute. Of, one minute. Does that hurt your back, Randy? I no, no, my not. back's okay. healthy now. I'm good. Okay. Now. Okay, ready? All right, one minute. God, Lee, this thing's little. Okay. Right? I right. know. He's only nine, but he's a good golfer. Okay, I gotta get the. Oh, I should stop talking, maybe? No, oh, it's okay. I'm like the commentator. It's lovely on the green today. I wish I had a good accent. Okay, okay you got one. You can't make any more. No more? How many did you make? How many did you make? Well, does the sand in the water count? <laughs> uh, you might deduct a point for that. <laughs> What are you, yeah, that's yeah. like, okay. okay, all right, 30 all right. seconds. 30 I don't seconds. know where the clock is, where it is. It's right at the top oh, right corner. it is at the top right, yeah. okay. All right, I, I gotta get one here, guys. Guy. Okay. All right, I'm that's even... in there, that's in there. That is in there. Randy, that's good. Tw only 18 seconds now, maybe if I just make him nervous. See, I just. Oh, go, oh. okay. How, much, how, much, how many seconds do I have left? 10 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna try to get two yeah. shots in here. Does somebody start coughing or something? <laughs> Three, we go. two, one. Oh, oh I'm sorry, what, I get Randy, two of you them? did not win. Nice job. <laughs> I had to give you AJ's, although your putter is fabulous here. Well, I, you know, Brian, he told me to bring a putter. It's like I this know. one I play we with. We just like so. to trick you a little it's bit. It's okay. We had fun doing oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. Right, yeah, a little quiet, little quiet clap. A little quiet clap. Yeah. If you that's wear a hat, right. you tip your hat, too. Tip, that's right. I don't know why they do that. So. I don't know why either. Okay, so we do have a fun show coming up. Yeah, we're taking a break. We got a lot coming back, right? That's right. At uh, Time Magazine announcing their choice for Person of the Year. Who will weigh in on who we think it really stood out in 2020? We'll it's talk about it. It's going to be a great conversation. Plus, looking for something sweet to add to your holiday spread? Of course you are. Tangi Patton of Good Taste TV is coming up with her take on the popular chocolate board. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. Of course, Randy's still here. We didn't kick him out. He didn't leave. That's good. <laughs> that was, was a fun game. It was I a fun that. game. We were talking about it during commercial break. Yeah. So tonight at 9 p.m. right here on NBC, Time Magazine is going to be announcing who they've selected as Person of the Year in an hour-long special. Yeah, they haven't done that before, right? Right. Uh, th this morning, the Today Show uh, announced the finalists, President-elect Biden, President Trump, frontline workers, and a movement for racial justice. The magazine uh, has already announced both their athlete and the Entertainer of the Year as well, but they'll kind of unveil that again coming up tonight. Absolutely, and so for Entertainer of the Year, this is Randy's favorite, K-pop group, BTS. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> no. What's Does their this... best song? <laughs> <laughs> it's Dynamite is their best song. They are crazy good, uh, super right. popular. And then, of yeah. course, the athlete. Hey, you can't go wrong. LeBron James uh, did so much on and off the court uh, during 2020. He has been named the Athlete of the Year, and I'm, I'm curious if he's won this before. I should have looked it up before it came out. I, I'm sure he's been in the running, at least. I'm sure he's done uh, all of his efforts with foundation work and uh, of course what he does on the court's amazing as well absolutely and well deserved I absolutely. mean truly yeah um, okay so Joe and Lauren are standing by now too we want to bring them in for this conversation because we want to hear what you guys think as far as maybe athlete or entertainer or even person of the year uh, Lauren let's start with you any ideas of someone that you would pick yes I thought about this long and hard today and what was the one thing that really got us through 2020 to help us stay connected the creator of Zoom. His name is Eric Yuan. Oh, good call. He's yeah. worth like $17 billion now just since the beginning of this year. But mm. I will say he gave us Zoom and now we can all stay connected in a nice, safe way and see my nieces and nephews daily. So, that is yeah. such, that's a really good idea, Thanks. Lauren. Okay, Joe, what do you have? So I'm going to go ahead and give it to the Divine Nine Greek organizations, including the one that I represent, Cap Alpha Psi. During the entire protest and movement that was happening, they flew out their fraternity and sorority members to different cities to get out there on the front, front lines and protest for racial justice. And that's something that we always encourage within our mission and our organization. So to all of those Greek fraternities mm -hmm. and sororities out there, definitely have to give them the front and the thumbs up, really, for this person of the year, our yeah. persons yeah. of the year. Well, you guys really came up with two really good... I like both of those. I do, too. Yeah. It's funny, when Lauren, when Lauren mentioned Zoom, 
Uh, it, there was a story out about a week ago what Zoom's stock was worth back oh, before the pandemic. Right, right. What's it worth now? I mean, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah, and same with DoorDash, <laughs> too. I mean, yeah. I don't think DoorDash can be a person of the year, but, <laughs> I mean, the same thing, because that's they're they're worth, a, you know, triple or quadruple right. of what they were just six months ago. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for weighing in, guys. Yeah, that was pretty course. cool. We do want to hear from you uh, what you think or who do you think the person of the year should be. And it can be anyone, not just the finalists that have been released. Let us know your answer and we could read it a little later on in the show I don't know is it your mom is it your dad you know it's uh it, it could be anybody. anybody on the list yeah that's right and by the way make sure to tune in tonight to see who is selected as this year's Time Magazine person of the year right here on KPRC that's gonna start at 9 p.m. I'm sure that's gonna be a tearjerker I, it probably will be I'm glad NBC's stepping up and doing right. this I, I'm surprised they haven't done it before I know actually, but uh, it's an easy hour to fill with some great stories you know they're gonna bring you tonight absolutely get yeah. your Kleenex ready all right, all right so more when we come back and more information uh, about the COVID vaccine we have details on an event that can help get your questions answered all right but first uh, let's see what Joe has coming up Joe yeah a lot of fun for those big Christmas lovers out there. They have just a place for you to head to. We want to find out how one local hotel is celebrating the season with back-to-back -back Christmas events. More Houston Life when we return. Stay with us. Well, coming up tonight on KPRC2, we're going to be hosting a virtual conversation moderated by KPRC2's Keith Garvin and health reporter Haley Hernandez. They're going to be joined by Memorial Hermann's infectious disease specialist, Dr. Linda Yancey, UT Health infections disease expert, Dr. Charles Erickson, and Dr. Thomas Girondo, chief of infections diseases at Baylor College of Medicine, to answer your questions about COVID-19 vaccinations. To register, you can head to click to Houston.com slash ask to. And speaking of Memorial Hermann, when you're living with joint pain, simple activities become difficult or really even impossible to accomplish. Luckily, experts with Memorial Hermann Joint Centers are always on hand and ready to help relieve the pain. Here with more is UT Health orthopedic surgeon Dr. Eric Sabanghi and lead nurse navigator Yolanda Evans. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thank you. Hi. Well, let's start with you, uh, Dr. Sabangi. What is the goal, really, of the Memorial Hermann Joint Center? You know, it's a collaborative effort. So what we want to do is present a patient possibility of getting their joint replacement with a team effort. So they have a team behind them to support knowledge to go into the surgery and then come out of it, knowing that they're going to be well taken care of throughout the process. And my part is a small part. The surgery is actually an hour. It's a small part. It's what Yolanda does and her team really makes a big difference longer term and really settling down the anxiety of a patient concerning what they're about to go through. And I'm so glad you brought that up, Dr. Sabangi, because regardless of, you know, surgery is surgery, comes with that some anxiety and all of that. So I'm so glad you brought that up. And Yolanda, let's talk about that because I think when you're dealing with these patients who are in pain, who've been dealing with pain for a long time, they're ready to get some relief. They want to get the surgery over with, but you're there to tell them all encompassing to kind of walk them through everything. Absolutely, yes. But what I like to tell people is that we provide a, a what I call a concierge nursing service, and it's very comprehensive. We work with a team of uh, navigators at the campus level, but often I'm the first point of contact for a lot of patients that have been experiencing joint pain. And so we help them determine if they're even appropriate for um, joint replacement surgery, shoulder replacement surgery. and. Um, you know, we uh, allay their fears, and I kind of hand off to the multidisciplinary team, starting with the campus level nurse navigators, and we walk them through the process from point from the first point of contact until after discharge. I love that you use the word concierge because when so many people are dealing with um, a surgery or pain, they feel like, oh, I can't get anybody on the phone to answer my questions, and that's one of the things you do. You get direct emails from the patients. Absolutely. Um, I often direct, I mean, I get, a patient may see a billboard or an ad um, uh, in a magazine or on television, and they will call or email me, and I um, call them back within 24, normally within 24 to 7 to 48 hours. And we give them personalized service, answering all of their questions, and giving them other resources, if, even if they're not appropriate. 
um, we give them other resources, community resources as well. It's so great that the patients are well taken care of. And Dr. Sabangi, let's talk about, I know each procedure is a little bit different, each patient is a little bit different, but the differences between shoulder replacement and other surgeries. Yeah, no, it's a good question, actually. You know, the shoulder is an interesting joint. It's very unstable to start with, so we've got to do a lot of things they get rid of the pain and then give you your function back. I mean, no one wants to go through this if they don't get their function back. She brought a little model with me just to show you what we do. Maybe you guys can see it, maybe not. Basically, this is the thing that's going to go in a patient's shoulder. And you can see metal and plastic, and it really reproduces what you normally have. And the goal is to get them back to doing golf, working out, you know, in the gym, right. having fun doing their daily activities without pain. That's really Absolutely. the bottom line. And you know what? And that's the bottom line is getting comfortable and not living with that pain and knowing that you are in good hands for sure. Dr. Eric Sabanki and Yolanda Evans, thank you so much for joining us today. Really great information. Our pleasure. Thank you. And for more information, you can visit memorialherman.org slash joint or call 713-272-1818. All right, we're going to switch gears now and check in with Joe Sam to see what he has coming up. Okay, Courtney, I had so much fun heading out here to check out what Christmas holiday magic was happening at the Post Oak Hotel at Uptown Houston. Now, they're hosting a variety of one-of-a-kind holiday experiences, welcoming guests of all ages to ring in the festive season with 12 days of Christmas. This is a lot happening there. Now, I got the chance to check out two of those special events. Sure to get anyone in the holiday spirit. Well, it's feeling like Christmas time here at the Post Oak Hotel in Uptown Houston, and we are having such a great time standing by this magnificent tree here. Stephen, you guys have incorporated the 12 days of Christmas, and we're into the countdown right now. Absolutely. I mean, it's right here. Absolutely. <laughs> we're so proud of the decoration this year. The main goal was to create a new tradition for families in the Houston area. So our design team, led by the events company and the in-house artist Jeff Smansky, and our entire team here at the Post Oak Hotel decided to create something truly unique where people could socially distance and so we did a fantastic rendition of the 12 days of Christmas starting in our lobby and it carries <laughs> over to our ballroom. One of their new installments features a life-size gingerbread house perfect for family photos and you may just run into a special visitor ready to greet you with the holly jolly ho ho ho. Basically what we're going to uh, be doing we're offering a uh, gingerbread workshop for mm -hmm. the families and the children to come and join us. Uh, so they'll get a small mini gingerbread house, some uh, ices to decorate it, and they can enjoy this event with the family and the kids. So while the children are decorating their gingerbread, uh, the parents are able to come down to Boucher, uh, make a reservation, and we are offering our holiday tea, mm. uh, which consists of some sandwiches, some pastries, and obviously some scones. Uh, but that's available as well. So we're going to get ready to head into another portion of the 12 days of Christmas here. Stephen, it's been an incredible time here at Post Oaks, and now we can really enjoy this brunch with Santa, which is what everyone else will be able to enjoy too, right? Well, we're looking forward to having a true brunch with Santa. <laughs> Santa is giving us a, a preview experience here, uh, joining us here at Bloom and Bee Restaurant for a three-course meal with our signature dessert, Bee Box, mm. created by our very talented uh, culinary team here at the Post Oak Hotel. It is such a creative way that they actually present those desserts. We saw how it was pulled out of that bee box there. What an incredible idea. Beautiful, right? This box was custom made by a chef and his team and created by uh, our culinary pastry team to have a very eclectic, diverse uh, dessert offering for our guests when they come to Bloom and Bee. Santa, Steven, we're gonna go ahead and cheers with this wonderful brunch and the 12 days of Christmas happening here at Post Oak Thank Hotel. Thank you very much, Joe. Santa, oh, oh, oh. happy holidays. Happy holiday. Let's eat now. All right. <laughs> Oh, Santa was so much fun. Now, this was only two of the 12 festive experiences happening at Post Oak. I'll have a link on our website where you can see a full list of the back-to-back -back events and how you can sign up for one or even all of them. Courtney, Randy, talk about a good time. And you know what? Those desserts that you just saw. Oh, yes. Yes. oh mouth watering. I know, but good. you had a little visit from Santa. Yeah. I hope you gave him your list. I did, and he okay. crossed out the whole list because he said I was on a naughty list. Uh oh, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting cold this year. Oh, I've heard that before too. Okay. All right, Joe. Thanks so much.
Well, coming up, attention shoppers, as I like to say, sharpen your elbows, yeah. Randy. Let's you get know it. The yeah. drill, right? <laughs> Dash Market is back at Silver Street Studios. We're going to have the details for you on how to shop small this weekend. All right, and we'll get a check of what Keith, Christine, and Justin have coming up on the news at 4 o'clock. Houston Life, back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. I'm Courtney Savala. It is 3.30. All right, I'm Randy McElvoy, and for Derek Shore today, we're having a good time. I mean, the show flies by. It does, right? Yeah, a lot, this of, is fun. lot of fun. A lot of time flies when you're having fun, Absolutely. fun here, Randy. Okay, earlier in the show, we were talking about Time Magazine naming the person of the year. So we right. wanted to hear from you on who you thought should be nominated in 2020. And let's get to Gloria. She writes in our first comment. I agree with her. All nurses who cared for COVID-19 patients are around the clock for months and basically who are still doing it. Absolutely. Uh, Catherine uh, weighed in as well. All of us, uh, all of us for getting through this together. So that speaks for a lot of people. It's Absolutely. Been a, hey, it's been a challenge all Listen, year long. It's a group effort, right? But I'm, look at this, Candace, you want to talk about a little smile and a little feel good. Oh yeah. Her dogs. <laughs> I love it. Listen, Gotta you can pops. nominate anybody, whatever makes you feel good. Okay. Right? We, we like that and we appreciate everybody weighing in. Absolutely. And don't forget that special is coming up tonight at nine right here on channel two. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here because we have to listen to our friends, Keith, Christine, and Justin, for a look at what they have coming up at 4. Can you believe I dragged them into Studio B, guys? Hey, guys. Well Looking done. Great. Yeah. I lo love the jeans, Randy. Thanks. You know, I don't have to dress up today. <laughs> there we go. That's a there good excuse. Go. And by the way, the beard trim looks good, Keith. It does. Yeah, I, I, saying I, that. I, I took it down a little bit. I know you did. So just, just <laughs> Looking hold, good. Trying to hold on to it as long as possible. Thank you. Thanks so much. I, you know, I went outside today with the beard and also with the jacket. I'm like, what do I need this jacket for? It's like warm outside. <laughs> yeah, it's like 80 degrees. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I told her, Randy was going out to do some uh, errands, and she had, like, yoga pants on and long sleeve, and I was like, have you been outside yet today? And she just kind of shot me a look, and I was like, like, I'm not going to tell you. Get the shorts. <laughs> so it was a layer day. Cooler That's in the right. morning, but warmer right. later. Exactly. It's, it's, it's warm, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, check this out, guys. Let's talk about how warm it is. You see a little jiggle on the Triangle Energy camera, just kind of jiggling there, and that's because the winds are starting to pick up, too. we got south winds. That south wind's really cranking, and that's what's got us into the upper 70s in downtown Sugarland, Even into Galveston, we've been in the 60s most of the week, now flipping into the low 70s. So that strong south wind... In, you get that coming in, you got to think, okay, well, there's got to be some rain coming soon. You would be correct. In fact, that is back off to the west. Uh, real messy forecast over across portions of Arizona and into New Mexico. Some decent snow as well. And this is all part of an area of low pressure. You can almost kind of see the swirl on that. And that's what's headed in our direction, which is what's going to bring the rain back. So let's do the future cast, and we'll kind of stop at a couple of points, and I'll talk about where that rain will be. Tomorrow morning... Mainly just an increase in the clouds, but notice we'll be well into the 60s. So as Keith mentioned, you won't need that jacket tomorrow morning either. And then some of the showers and even some thunderstorms. I think we're going to see some thunderstorms with this. The better chance of that will likely be north of downtown, but that's by about 2 o'clock. 3, 4 o'clock, some of those could get on the stronger side as well. The Storm Prediction Center's got us under what they call a marginal rate. That's basically 2 out of 5, meaning that we could see a couple of these storms get on the strong side. But once that's through, we start to clear out, and as we get into Saturday, Saturday morning into the 50s and 40s and that north wind continues throughout the day and will be into the 60s versus the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. So a little more Christmas like weather as we get into the weekend. Same thing on Sunday. Quick hiccup with a few shower chances there as well. And then 50s low 40s and then right now for the most part we're going to keep it a uh, fairly quiet forecast for much of next week and that's an important week for a lot of folks who are going to be doing that last minute shopping and that uh, certainly feels a little more Christmassy out there too in those low 60s you'll be able to bring back the sweaters and the uggs you know, I was, you know they're coming <laughs> <laughs> all right justin thank you yeah. also uh, other big stories this afternoon involving schools we're talking about today the texas education agency or the tea says it will not be grading texas schools on its a through f rating scale because of the pandemic, the agency also making a key decision about star tests, what they're saying about the tests ahead at four. Plus, it is a story we've been following all day and all week, rather. An FDA advisory panel will vote on whether or not to recommend an emergency use authorization for the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. A yes vote doesn't necessarily mean it's a done deal. Health reporter Haley Hernandez is tracking the hearing and will spell it all out for us. Plus, most of us have heard of night school, right? Well, what about night kindergarten? We are going to introduce you to one district that's offering night classes for kindergarten students and how it's helping parents juggle work and their child's education. Certainly an interesting uh, concept we were talking about just a few Yeah, definitely ago. a talker for sure.
So jam-packed show coming up before 4 o'clock, you guys. I would imagine that's going to help some parents who have different work schedules. Yes. Because yeah, absolutely. right now, everybody's world is upside down with mm -hmm. virtual learning. Got to keep them awake. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, guys, we'll see you in less than 30. Thanks Sounds so good. much. See you guys. Hey, uh, tomorrow, a Dash Market will open to the public at Silver Street Studios. I know. It's like that? music to that, my that's ears, a big Randy. Y'all yeah. know I love a good shopping yeah. event. There is going to be 114 vendors that will be at Dash Market. You know, this is their first holiday market. Normally, they do mm -hmm. a spring and a fall show, and this time they are hoping you will come out and shop small this weekend. You've got to be so excited that this show is actually going to happen this holiday season. We are. After last spring, when the show got moved twice, and then in the middle of the show, Houston went to code red, and hurricanes stay in place, shelter in place, it devastated so many small vendors. And we want to give all of our vendors such an opportunity to sell all their products. And for people who are maybe first-time dashers, explain what you look for in a vendor. So for this particular show, we've never had a holiday dash before. So this particular show, we have curated it for a gift for everyone. Anything that you can think of, you will be able to do literally all of your Christmas shopping right here with all of these vendors. Okay, I know we are in setup mode right now, but I'm gonna walk around and see what we can find. I know there's gonna be something here that I just have to have. KB Design caught my eye. Kelly is a former sculptor turned welder. The Eterna bracelet is permanent and completely customizable. So what is an Eterna bracelet? It does not come off? It does not come off. It is a delicate 14 karat gold and sterling silver chain. And I weld it to your wrist and it has no clasp. And so it just stays on forever. It's the perfect accessory. It's lightweight, you don't feel a thing. It's just like my photographer Paul said, the Eterna bracelet is the jewelry equivalent of a tattoo. And there you go. That is gorgeous. Weld it on. So we have the Christmas pajamas. We also have a lot of luxury pajamas. We just kind of have something for everybody here. How important is it for people to come out to Dash Market to support you, a small business owner, and the rest of the vendors that are here during this time? Well, you know, the problem is, Courtney, you know, we start shopping back in January. We put in all of our orders for January all the way through December. And so once everything started shutting down, it's way too late to cancel. So a lot of these vendors, including us, we've done this for so long. And this is the time of year that we really plan on the whole year's worth of selling. Okay, guys, one more sneak peek while setup is happening here. We have Dusty with Outlaw and Bandana Company. Tell me about your business because I'm already sucked in with ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, it's a really neat thing concept that we come up with. My family is a background in music, and so we started doing rock flannels and crocodile purses and bandanas and just different things that kind of go with the rock theme music uh, idea. And a lot of the 80s has actually come back. And so that's why I've done the flannel shirts, as you can see. It's a shirt and then a, an actual old t-shirt, a rock t-shirt, and then they cut it out and I have it sewed on. These are yeah. so great. I mean, I wish I had my original concert t-shirts because I went to a Nirvana show. I wasn't lucky enough to see ACDC, but man, I would love to wear these. Tell me about your inspiration, really. Well, my mom was a singer when I was younger and my brother played the drums and my son now currently does electric guitar. And so the cool thing is, is my mom actually made a record, a 45 record, back when I was younger, which is really bizarre, because now here we are. A lot of people don't even know what a 45 record is. And <laughs> that is so yeah. awesome. You know what I should say to that, Dusty? Rock on, everybody. <laughs> Rock on! <laughs> I love it. There's always so many great things that you can find at these types of market. Dash is wonderful. Now, the hours are 10 to 5, Friday through Sunday. Tonight, they're open, but it's only a preview. You had to have uh, buy a ticket for that. Uh, the rest of the day's admission is $10. There's tons of free parking in the area. We got to mention that masks are required at all times. You're also going to get your temperature check upon entry, as well as other COVID protocols that are going to be in place there mm -hmm. over at Silver Street Studios. But 
website. You can check out dashhouston.com for more information. It's a great way to support you, all these small businesses. Ab you, absolutely, you do that, and you had a great time, I could tell. I kind of did. How long did you stay there? You could, oh, you well, probably, you probably hang longer. for a while, right? I got a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun stuff. Hopefully, I'll see you guys out there this weekend. Still there ahead, go. our friend Tangie Patton. She is here. You know, we know and love her from Good Taste TV. She's putting a gourmet twist on a classic hot chocolate Ooh. recipe with some help of a local restaurant. I, I get to sample that. Yes, today, you too. do. Hey, but first, uh, let's check in with Lauren for a look at what she has coming up. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, you guys, guess what? After the break, I'll tell you all about the Hanukkah house located in Meyerland, where you can see an over the top Hanukkah light display just in time for the first night of Hanukkah. His life will be right back. Houston life from the bench on a bench. From our family to yours, we hope that everyone's safe and happy and spitting those dreidels this Hanukkah season. Well, we sure are, but we've all experienced some dark moments over the past few months, but here are some special lights sure to brighten your day. The Hanuk House in Meyerland is back this year with its massive lights display, and it's drawing people in from all over the world. Take a look. And what you should be doing on your Hanukkah calendar this year is putting the Hanukkah house as a stop because Philip Grossman and his wife Dana Grossman and their three kids have done the miracle of lights in their front yard. I need you to tell everybody exactly what your front yard looks like every single night. My house is pretty lit up. I have uh, a lot of lights, ground coverage. I have it on the roof. I have it set on the windows. Inflatables. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty lit. How long have you been putting up all the Hanukkah lights? How many years have you done this in a row? So I started in my, when my uh, youngest daughter was born, so 13 years now. How many lights do you use? How many do you put up? Oh man, I have no idea. People have asked me. I, I have at least 100 strands of lights. I probably in, in the same amount of extension cords. It's a lot of extension cords to go with all the lights. <laughs> so does your wife Dana help you put them up, or is it just you standing up on the ladder and your kids help? Like, what's the process? It's, I'm pretty neurotic. I, uh, you know, I hot glue almost every single bulb onto the house, so it's hot glue. Uh, yeah, I, I hot glue it. It's a mess, but every light has to be exactly perfect. So you know, the kids help me replace the bulbs or fix things. Um, but it's it's mostly me for the, me for the most part. But uh, then Dana, she likes to go to the next level. She has she oh, she influenced me to to get the music button working. And okay, complete, so for people who lights. don't know, the lights are synced to music, right? Yes, yes, it's, it's synced to music. Um, it blinks. You come by, push the button, and you know I I see people dancing all through the night. It, out there, they push the button. The kids are dancing, running around. So it's it's great. Why do you go to such extremes to make them so crazy? I mean, I don't do it for me. I do it for the kids. You know, growing up, I always wanted to have Hanukkah lights on my house. We had a couple, and you know, I was almost jealous. So I do this to hopefully, you know, inspire other families uh, to put up lights. I want to see Houston lit up. Well, this is definitely a fun, safe, uh, COVID-friendly way that you guys can take the kids out, take the fam out, come drive. Definitely. Where can people find the Hanukkah house? Where are you located? Okay, so come out to Meyerland. We're at the 5100 block of Carew. Um, usually the lights go on about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. Um, come by. You can push the button all the way till 11 o'clock. Um, after that, it won't work. <laughs> so <you can> come <laughs> That's by. You have lights. To cut off. Like, it's bedtime. There I don't is need a the flashing off. Hanukkah Harry by my window. <laughs> right. The neighbors don't like the music going off at 1 in the morning. So I, I turned that off. <laughs> all right. Well, Philip, thank you for your time. I can't wait for everybody to see the magnificent Hanukkah house. I've got all the details up at HoustonLife.tv if you need the address or the hours again. And happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Yay, that makes me so happy. Again, if you're interested in stopping by to see all those amazing lights, I do have the location online, HoustonLife.tv. And just a little Hanukkah background for those who don't know much about it. Tonight is the first of eight nights. Families will celebrate by lighting a candle on the menorah. They'll also eat traditional food like latkes and gelt. That's this, the coins right here. And they'll play games like the spinning dreidel. And that's just like that. You get these coins for each different side that it lands.
lands on it, it means something different in Hebrew. So Randy and Courtney, if you've ever wanted to know about Hanukkah, there is your mini little lesson. That, gonna, that is a good lesson. I'm it light is. light first candle for us. Perfect. And this will be followed by a Hanukkah prayer, and that's when the little kids get to uh, open their presents. Well, you know, maybe I'll have to get this, <laughs> uh, this candle lit while y'all are talking about Live TV. Else. And Lauren, it there was it great. I love yes. the, um, the lights on the house as well, and I do know that this segment is mom approved your mom, Absolutely. which I'm super excited about. <laughs> yes, yes. I wore my blue for my mom today. Yes. And those little kiddos in that little uh, commercial you saw, those belong to my family. Thanks, well. Lauren. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. If you like sweets, like I do, you're going to love this idea coming up. I mean, you want me over. You said, oh, gonna, it's going to be pretty good. And this sure is, enough, I mean, look at this. I know. This is quite the spread. Tangie Patton of Good Taste TV joins us now with some of her sweet treats for the holiday season. Hi, Tangie. Hey, guys. Happy holidays. Same to you. Yeah. This is quite a spread, and it's all about chocolate. It's a, well, isn't much of life all about <laughs> chocolate? I mean, when you boil it sure down. Is. So <laughs> these are fun. These are trending big time, and they're chocolate boards. So think of a charcuterie board, but instead you're putting everything delicious and chocolate. And you can have a lot of fun with them. You can create ingredients just to put mix with the hot chocolate. You can create chocolate goodies you like to eat. And we kind of did a little bit of both there. I've also got a couple of quick wines I wanted to show you because for the adults, if you're not drinking hot chocolate, you can have wine while the kiddos do that. One in particular is kind of interesting because it was aged in bourbon barrels. So it's a Ooh. Buck Shack Zinfandel. Courtney, you may have that there. Yes. Aged in bourbon barrels. So it's got a lot of fruit because it's a Zinfandel, but then it's got this vanilla warm bourbon kind of over notes that come in there. And it's really a perfect chocolate wine. It's a lot of fun. AGB has that. Ooh, that and is good. And by the way, Tangie, I did cheat a piece of chocolate, so it does pair very nicely with it. <laughs> I, I would have cheated more than one, and you if know. I'm honest, I, I've already done that. I'm a true um, taster. <laughs> the other is a Josh Prosecco. I love a Josh, any of the Josh wines, less than $15. The Prosecco is relatively new, and it's absolutely fantastic. It is the perfect holiday wine. I love this. And uh, Tangie, how, how much is the Buck Shack? The Buck Shack is about $18, $19 mm -hmm. at HEB. It's so lovely. One of the fun things about making the hot chocolate, if you really want to get out there, um, is to actually make real hot chocolate from scratch, right? Hugo Ortega, his brother Ruben, as you know, and a chef as well, is a chocolate master. They do it all from scratch. They grind the cacao beans, they roast them, they, they process everything there on site. So if you have a chocolate dessert at Hugo's, you're having the real deal. Nice. And this time of year, we always, you know, think of special gifts. I think now more than ever, thinking local for these gifts. I mean, these restaurants have been through such a tough time. All of our local businesses have. And this makes a great gift for the chocolate lover. You can get them on their websites that Hugo has. It's a, a, an entire kit along with his awesome recipe book. But you get the, the chocolate disc, you get the Molinillo, which is what you use uh, to make it froth up. It's just a great gift. and. There's a chocolatier in town that I've been a fan of for many years, Araya. And I think on your chocolate board, if you look closely, you'll see some multicolored uh, little chocolates, some truffles. Yeah, they're, yep. yeah, they're, just they're beautifully beautiful. painted. Uh -huh. I've been a fan of Araya chocolates for a long, long time. You and me both. And they, they make these gorgeous gift boxes. So think in terms of, you know, giving your friends something from a local business. And I think for businesses who usually have holiday parties this time of year and they're not, Give your employees a restaurant gift card. Give them a, a gift card to Araya. I mean, Hugo's kit, something, anything. There's so many great local businesses we can support. So it's a great way to do that as well. And they do have a special offer for Houston Life. It's 10% off orders up to $400 at any of their stores. And that's happening in person on Saturday only. And that is promo code Houston Life. Of course, they have locations at that's Uptown right. Park and Katie. I've been a big fan, locally owned. Randy, I know you're going to walk through the, the hot chocolate. This, Tangi, this what does the, he do? Yeah, the frothing demo. Okay. Right? So the first thing you do is you're going to... If you have the Hugo's kit, you'll use this chocolate disc. And they've done it. They've mixed it with cinnamon, vanilla, all, all the right. good stuff. So you'll bring milk to a boil and drop this in there and then just start stirring on the stove, right? You right. do that right before you're ready to have it, which you guys did earlier. 
And you want to be careful if, if you let milk boil too much, it will absolutely go crazy and overflow all over your stove. So you want to sit right there with it. Once it's dissolved, you can pour it into another container if you like, if you're going to use the molneal. Yeah, and I think just for magic of TV, that's what Randy has in here now, right? And you just- I was giving instructions here. There you go, you got it, Randy. All right, Todd, we, we need our toppings. Comes yeah. in handy. Well, then there you, you can pour it in the mug, and Randy's going to add his toppings, and then we're going to get a yeah, taste test. I'll do a couple of those marshmallows. <laughs> Absolutely. Right there. Are you, you want me to pour you some as yeah, well? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? Okay. And then, by the way, we do want to remind people that you can watch Tangie's show, go. Good Taste with Tangie, weekend mornings right here on Channel 2. And set your DVRs you at 5 30. Cheers, my friend. Yeah, yeah, right. Too. Sign Tangie, up for our cheers newsletter to you. and follow us on Instagram, too. Cheers, our hands are full. <laughs> we'll cheers. be right back You're covered. with more Houston life. We've got bubbles and hot chocolate. What more do we need? That's get right. in there. All yeah. right. I want to get some marshmallows. I know. Here. Randy McElvoy, did you have fun? I, I mean, an hour's already gone by. I know. Can you believe it? I, I, have me back anytime, especially when you bring a spread out like this. I'm telling y'all, this is so good. Dreams come true. I dreamed about champagne and chocolate at work. Hot and chocolate's it, really good, by the way. It's really good. And by the way, the full article is on our website. If we went through that, don't forget to use Houston Life promo code at Araya this weekend. Mm -hmm. Keith and Christine, I think we sent over some sweets for y'all. We do. We, we have those, and believe me, they are not going to last that long. <laughs> I think we have right enough here in my little special place. Yes. Oh, they're good. Out of his reach. She, she, she has them over there all by herself, you know, like, what's up with that? I know. Well, we, have, we have plenty here. I will we'll make share. sure. I'll be in over. Due time. In Cheers. Due time. Cheers, you guys.